territories. The territories. 
is the majority of being tiny states owned by families of imperial knights. Okay, now let's talk about the dynasties in the Roman Empire and after we're gonna talk about the kingdoms. So, first, there are the Carolingian dynasty. The, we don't need, the most important were Carolingian dynasty, Vidonit dynasty, Ottonian dynasty, Salian dynasty, Staufen dynasty, House of Luxembourg, and the last one, and the longest one was House of Habsburg. Well, the House of Habsburg, House of Habsburg, okay, the House of Habsburg ruled in two periods of time, from 140-40 to 1740 and from 1765 until it falling apart in 1806. Yes, make it in the longest ruling family in the Holy Roman Empire or Imperium Germanicae. Okay, here it's a very interesting fact. The capitals, the Holy Roman Empire, like we know it, had no fixed capital. Very important, had no fixed capital because each king traveled between residences. Nonetheless, each of the rulers had their preferred place of court. And for example, under the influential reign of Otto I, Magdeburg in Saxony, here, became the preferred city of the Holy Roman Empire. Vienna or Wien in Österreich was also considered the capital of the empire by the 15th of century. Also shared this with Prague, because born there, Charles uh, IV elected Prague as the capital of the Holy Roman Empire in the 14th century. And there were 51 free imperial cities in the Holy Roman Empire, as in 1792. So there were no fixed capital because each king which was elected, was, had his own capital. Yeah, the Holy Roman Empire had survived over a thousand years when it was finally destroyed by Napoleon in the French Wars in 1806. But um, now let's discover the fact about the duchies and the Uh, the kingdoms. So we're gonna start here in the north with the lower and upper Saxony. Uh, let's zoom in. Okay, we have lower Saxony, which I cannot see here because I don't have the map, it's not full. And we have the upper Saxony and the lower Saxony. I'm gonna draw the contour of both to see them much easier. Okay, so we have here the Lower Saxony and the Upper Saxony. 
Ah, here it's the upper Saxony. And here we have Pomerania, which was part of the upper Saxony at some point. Good. Now, all right, about this territory, the territory of the free state of Saxony became part of the Holy Roman Empire in the 10th century. So, when the dukes of Saxony were also kings or emperors of the Holy Roman Empire, comprising the Ottonian or Saxony di Ottonian dynasty. So, because Otto the first was from Saxony. Okay, now let's move next. Okay, I made a mistake here. The lower Saxony, the upper, it's here. Okay. It's very hard to identify this on the map. Okay, now let's talk of Margaviet, uh, Margav uh, Margraviate of Brandenburg, which is another ducky. It's right here, like we say. Brandenburg, the house here in Brandenburg, the house of Hohenzollern came to the throne in Brandenburg from 1415 until uh, 1415 in 1417 Frederick I moved its capital from Brandenburg to Berlin. Berlin, the Markgraviate of Brandenburg ended with dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire in 1806. It was replaced after Napoleonic Wars with the Prussian province of Brandenburg. And we're gonna stay in the area because we have here Pomerania, another zone, Pomerania. Okay, and the facts about Pomerania. The Duchy of Pomerania was established as a vassal state in Poland in 1121, which remained until the fragmentation of Poland in 1138. Afterwards, the Dukes of Pomerania were independent and later vassals of the Duke of Saxony. From 1164 to 1181 of the Holy Roman Empire and then the part of Denmark Kingdom and finally from 12 12, 27, 12, or 1227, staying with the Holy Roman Empire, but as a vassals of Brandenburg. Good. Now, in this part, we have the Westphalia. Let's draw the contour. Westphalia. <clears throat> okay. Well, Westphalia is very known in the Holy Roman Empire because of the peace of Westphalia recognized the full territorial sovereignty of the entire members of the states of the empire. They were empowered to contract treaties with one another and with foreign powers. After the peace of Tresbalia, none, no king or king.
kingdom will be at war with another one in the Holy Roman Empire area. Well, and the next, we're gonna move to the Holland area or United Province of Netherlands. United Provinces of Netherlands, which is this area. Okay, let's draw the contour. All right. Well, United Province of Netherlands. Here you can see Netherlands and here the United Provinces. Okay. Well, in the high Middle Ages between 1000 and 1432, saw so the Netherlands become part of the Holy Roman Empire. So, they are from the early stages. And accompanied with a continual war between the feuding states, Holland, like, was the uh, name at that, uh, in that time, established itself as a major area of influence and solved many wars between 1350s and 1490s mainly over the title of the Count of Holland. Holland. Right. Now, the next, it's Upper and the Lower Rhine. And um, here we have Upper Rhine, and here we have the Lower Rhine. So I'm gonna try to uh, trace the contour of this complicated area on the map. All right, so we have Upper Rhine and Lower Rhine. Yes, the Upper Rhenish Circle or Oberrheinische Reichskreis was an imperial circle this, of the Holy Roman Empire established in 1500 on the territory of former Duchy, Duchy of Upper Lorraine, this was Upper Lorraine, and large parts of the Rhenish Franconia, including the Swabian as such in the Duchy of Savoy. Good. And because we mentioned Franconia, it's time to take some facts in account about Franconia. And here we have the Principality of or Duchy of Franconia. All right, well, Franconia's history as an entity in the, in the Holy Roman Empire separates from Bavaria, which is nearby, back over a thousand years, and it was a duchy of the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, now let's move to the next region and here we have Bohemia Bohemia let's draw the contour of the Bohemia Ducky well the Duchy of Bohemia was raised to a hereditary kingdom of Bohemia when Duke Ottokar 
or to call the first ensured his elevation by the German King Philip of Swabia in 1198. Good. Now, the next one, it's nearby. And it's the historical region of Silesia. Silesia, which is here. Okay, let's draw the contour to identify it better. The Silesia. Silesia. Well, the Duchy of Silesia, the duchies, because there are more of them, here is just the kingdom. The duchies of Silesia were the more than 20 divisions, 20 divisions of the region of the Silesia. And it was formed between the 12th and 14th century by the breakup of the duchy of Silesia. Then part of the kingdom of Poland. In 1335, the duchies were ceded to the Kingdom of Bohemia under the Treaty of Trentschin, Trentschin, and making part of the Holy Roman Empire after. Right, we gonna stay in the area, and here we have. Moravia, Moravia, Moravia. Well, let's talk about Moravia. This is a small area, so, so mean it's the best. We have, well, the Margraviate of Moravia was one of the lands of the Bohemian crown. So, it was part of the Bohemian crown at some point with in the Holy Roman Empire and after then Austria to Hungary existing from 1182 until 1918 1918. Okay, now we have here in the area we have Austria. Austria, like we are knowing in the Holy Roman Empire or the Germany Empire. Good. And uh, Austria was at that point uh, was dominated like I said by the House of Habsburg and the House of Habsburg Lorraine from 1273 1273 to 1918 in 1806 when the Emperor Francis II of Austria dissolved the Holy Roman Empire. Austria became the Austrian Empire and was also part of the German Confederation until the Austro-Prussian War in 1866. So Emperor Francis II dissolved Austria or dissolved the entire Holy Roman Empire and the next was the Austrian Austro-Hungarian Empire. All right. Well, next one. It's Bavaria. The historic area of Bavaria. Wow. 
Well, Bavaria became part of the Holy Roman Empire in the 10th century. During that period, Bavaria was constantly ravaged and depopulated by the Hungarians, which are here. And was depopulated at the Battle of Pressburg. Uh, Pressburg is now Bratislava in Slovakia in 1990. 07 on 4th of July, the Hungarians inflicted a disastrous defeat on Bavarians, but Hungarian ambitions in Bavaria were checked permanently by Otto I. The capital was in the city of Munich. Good. Now, let's move next, and we're going to talk about Schwabia. Schwabia. Well, the Duchy of Schwabia was proclaimed by Halofink Count Palatine Erchanger in 915. He had allied himself with the Hunfrieding rival Burchard the second, or Burchard the second, and defeated King Conrad of Germany in the Battle of Valvis. The most notable family to hold Schwabia were the Hohenstaufen who held it with a brief interruption from 1079 until 1268. So, for much of this period, the Hohenstaufen were also Holy Roman Emperors. The capital of Schwabia was in Augsburg. Well, Augsburg is not far away from Munich. It's right here. Uh, Augsburg. I can, yes, you can see it. Augsburg. So here it was the capital of Schwabia. Now, let's move next. We have Alsace. Alsace. Like we are knowing. And this this territory. Well, Alsace experienced great prosperity during the 12th and 13th centuries under the Hohenstaufen emperors, like Schwabia, because was part. Uh, no, it was part because the Hohenstaufen ruled the Holy Roman Empire in that period. In 1469, following the treaties of Saint Omer, the Upper Alsace, which is here, was sold to Archduke of Austria, Sigismund of Austria, and the Duke of Burgundy. By the time the Protestant reformations in the 16th century, Strasbourg, which was the main city, was prosperous community, and its inhabitants accepted the Protestantism Protestant in 1523. Martin Busser was a prominent Protestant reformer in the region. His efforts were countered by the Roman Catholic of Habsburgs, who tried to eradicate the heresy in the Upper Alsace. As a result, Alsace was transformed into a Catholic and Protestant territory, which is, was something new to have Catholic and Protestant territories in the same time. Okay, and now here we have 
the Duchy of Lorraine. Lorraine. And well, Duchy of Lorraine was founded in 959 following the division of Lotharingia in two separate states, Duchy's Upper Lorraine and Lower Lorraine, the westernmost parts of the Holy Roman Empire. The Lower Duchy was quickly dismantled, while the Upper Lorraine came to be known as the Duchy of Lorraine. The Duchy of Lorraine was coveted and briefly occupied by the Dukes of Burgundy and the Kings of France, but was ruled by the Dukes of House of Lorraine after 1473. Interesting facts, right? And we're gonna go down to Switzerland. Switzerland. And Switzerland, the area of Switzerland, was incorporated into Frankish Empire in the 6th, 6th century. In the High Middle Ages, the eastern part became part of Duchy of Swabia, which is right here. Okay. within the Holy Empire, while the western part was part of Burgundy. At the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648, Switzerland attained legal independence from the Holy Roman Empire, like we can see it today. All right. What we have next? All right, we have Trent. It's just a small part, former part of the Holy Roman Empire. Well, Trent, the Prince Bishopric of Trent was a principality roughly corresponding to the present day to the northern Italia, Italia, autonomous province of. Trentino. 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 And it was created in 1207 and existed until 1806 when it was secularized and absorbed in the country of Tyrol, held by the House of Habsburg. All right. Next is Carinthia. Right here. Carinthia. Well, Carinthia remained a state of the Holy Roman Empire until its falling apart in 1806. But from 1335 it was ruled by the Austrian dominos of Habsburg dynasty. A constituent part of the Habsburg monarchy and of the Austrian Empire, it remained crown land of Austria and Hungary until 1918 and today Carinthia is a state in Austria right we have next it's Styria but this is the historical region of Styria because now Styria is part of Austria Duchy of Styria, it was part of the Holy Roman Empire 
until 1806 and it was then part of Austria until dissolution in 1918. Now it's part again of the Austrian, st uh, Austrian country or state. Next is Cur uh, let's talk about Tyrol. Tyrol, which is here. Well, Tyrol, uh, the princely county of Tyrol until 1493 was a state of the Holy Roman Empire. Originally a jurisdiction under the sovereignty of Tyrol, it was inherited by the Counts of Gorizia in 1253. And finally, it was under the Austrian House of Habsburg, ruling in 1363. Now it's part of the Austrian Next is Carniola, right? Carniola. Yes, Carniola was an it was a duchy. Duchy was an imperial state of the Holy Roman Empire, established this under the Habsburg rule on the territory of the East Frankish March in 1364, a hereditary land of the Habsburg monarchy, it became a constituted land of the Austrian Empire in 1804. Okay, and we have here a part of Count Kingdom of Venice, Kingdom of Venice, Kingdom of Venice. Well, known as the Regnum Italia or Regnum Italicum or Regno d'Italia, it was one of the constituent kingdoms of the Holy Roman Empire, along with the kingdoms of Germany and Burgundy. It compromised most of the northern and central Italy, but excluded the Republic of Venice. And this is the Kingdom of Venice. Good. And the last one, it's Italy, which is not here presented, but Italy, the Kingdom of Italy, at that point, Italy was divided in many duchies and kingdoms, but the Kingdom of Italy was one of the constituent kingdoms, the founder kingdoms of the Holy Roman Empire, along with the kingdoms of Bohemia, kingdoms of Germany and Burgundy. It originally comprised large parts of the northern and central Italy only. Its original capital was Pavia, Pavia, until 11th century. Okay. Well, very messy history in these parts, right? With so many treaties, so many kingdoms, so many Arguas between those. And this is how the Holy Roman Empire survived over almost or over 1000 years. Thank you very much for watching and we will see next time and in another video. Until then, all the best and bye bye. That's my